Hey friends, greetings, and welcome to The Right Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, questions about formulations, ingredients, skin health products, if you have a common or success story you'd like to share, if you have questions about our Truth Skin Health products, which you can find out all about at truthtreatments.com, our number is 844-236-6010, and we want to be your go-to resource for common sense health information. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of our longevity products, please go to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can order products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website and help me in my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. I've been doing this now for, oh gosh, 25 or 30 years. I've been promoting good nutrition and using uh, nutritional supplementation to deal with health challenges and just to stay healthy, to, re to uh, slow down the aging process. But I can't do this all myself, folks. I need help. And if you want to, if you're the type of person that likes to help people out, if you have experienced the power of nutrition yourself and you want to help spread the word, if you're business-minded or entrepreneurially, mind, entrepreneurially minded and you want to make some money while you help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, Longevity is for you. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a business. Call 866-735-2470 and they can give you the, the whole scoop. 866-735-2470. Okay, we have a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour. Ronell Wood is going to be talking about her book, Touching Light, How to Free Your Fiber Optic Fascia. I absolutely love this book. It's super easy to read. Ronell is a body worker, and she understands fascia inside and out, no pun intended, uh, the electrical nature of the fascia and the fiber optic nature of the fascia. To me, this is so fascinating how the fascia... The connective tissue works with biophotons. Yes, biological light, biophotons. This is not airy fairy. This is hardcore science. Biophotons, the body, uh, inside the body, uh, light is light is released and light is absorbed from not just the connective tissue, our DNA itself, our genetics itself is biophotonic. Ronell will be talking about the nature, uh, the fiber optic nature of the uh, part of the connective tissue that's called the fascia, which we've touched upon and we will be talking about further on the bright side. Her book is Touching Light and we'll be speaking to her at the bottom of the hour. We'll get to your calls in our second segment. All right, so yesterday we left off talking about the skin's connective tissue, which like the connective tissue inside the body, is the main determinant of the physical appearance of the skin. The skin is very deceiving. It looks like it's just one homogenous unit, but it is not. When we are aging, when our skin is aging, wrinkles, fine lines, crow's feet, thinning of the skin, and, and not that I want to be the bearer of bad news here, but this aging process, this breakdown process of the connective tissue starts scarily early. Even in our 20s, 
our connective tissue in the skin is starting to break down. Certainly by our late 20s, the, the process is, is, gets going in earnest. By 28, 29, 30, that's why it's never too early really to start a good skincare program, to start using retinol, to start using topical vitamin C. If you're in your 20s, don't, you know, we have the sense, as, as us older folks can attest, you know, folks in their 40s, 50s, and 60s can attest, we have the sense that we're invulnerable and immortal when we're in our 20s. That is not the case. Underneath the skin, where we cannot see, the breakdown process is beginning. Even in our 20s, even for some folks in the teens, by the ni uh, time we're 19 or so, 18, the, for some people, the, the, the connective tissue breakdown process is occurring in the skin. And you know what? If it's occurring in the skin, it's occurring in the rest of the body because the connective tissue is a unified whole. So if it's breaking down in one area, the whole thing is breaking down. Nothing just breaks down in one area. So if you're breaking down on the skin, you're breaking down inside as well. As far as the skin goes, uh, all the signs of skin aging, all the things, uh, the unpleasantries of skin aging from, from crow's feet and fine lines to thinning skin, all of these are uh, facets of connective tissue breakdown. Wrinkles are skin arthritis. Everybody knows that arthritis is a connective tissue problem. That's why we take glucosamine for, arth for our arthritis. But the same breakdown process that occurs in the joints happens in the skin and in this way, skin, uh, wrinkles on the skin and fine lines on the skin are skin arthritis. Aging is body arthritis. Liver disease is liver arthritis. Parkinson's disease is brain arthritis. Heart disease is heart arthritis. And I, I think this is so fundamentally important when it comes to how we take care of our body because it simplifies health. It simplifies the protocols of health. When we understand the generic nature of the degenerative and disease process, of the aging process itself, when we understand that it doesn't matter where it's happening in the body, it matters that it is happening, we will understand at the same time that there's only a few basic strategies we need to employ to take care of everything. Your diagnosis doesn't matter. Your diagnosis is a diversion. It doesn't matter where the disease or degenerative process is occurring, it matters that it's occurring. And this simplifies health so dramatically. We don't need a specialist. The only uh, people who care about special diseases are specialists because they get paid for special diseases. But when the body breaks down, it's breaking down in a generic fashion. This is the fundamental idea of the bright side, that the, the, the specific place where the body is breaking down, where the fibrosis is showing up, where the thinning is taking place, doesn't matter. It matters that it's happening, not where it's happening. So basically, for no matter what your health challenge is, from wrinkles to heart disease, eliminate toxicity, which acts to destroy connective tissue. When the blood becomes toxic, it, it, it's, not very, uh, it, it's, it's not a very large jump to connective tissue toxicity. The connective tissue is the great dumping ground of blood toxins. When blood becomes toxic, and it, for the most part becomes toxic from food, including sugar, when the blood becomes toxic, it is a very short jump to connective tissue toxicity because eventually that toxicity goes from the blood to the connective tissue. The body dumps out the toxins into the connective tissue. So eliminate toxicity, which acts to destroy connective tissue. And by the way, cigarette smoke also destroys connective tissue. So if you're smoking, that ain't a good thing. I, I know everybody understands that, but it, it, the mechanism of the destruction of the body from cigarette smoke is very fascinating. You ever see those lines on the upper lips of people who've been smoking for a long time? That's the manifestation of connective tissue damage in the upper lips. You can always tell when somebody's been smoking for a long time because the connective tissue in the skin deteriorates much more significantly than it does in non-smokers. If that's not a reason to quit smoking, I don't know what else is. I mean, certainly cancer and emphysema. And by the way, emphysema and cancer are also connective tissue problems. So eliminate toxicity, sugar, certainly quit smoking. All of this acts to accelerate the breakdown of connective tissue. Sugar candies the connective tissue. It burns the connective tissue. They call that glycation. And finally, use nutrition to build the connective tissue, especially protein, especially essential fats, especially amino acids like glycine, which you'll find in our bone broth protein, bone broth in general, eat cartilage-containing products. Don't forget your vitamin C. Don't forget your glucosamine. 
nutritional supplement program basically is what we're talking about and dietary uh, uh, foods that feature amino acids and proteins that help build connective tissue. All right, got to take a break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got a, uh, empty lines for you. Give us a shout. We'll be back right after this. We are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on the archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com and also brightsideben.com. They're both searchable if you miss a program or if you have a topic that you're particularly interested in. You can search them at benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up. That's a great website, by the way, if you haven't checked that out. It's a, it's a compilation of all my various websites and blog posts and videos. We've got lots of YouTube videos up, by the way. You can always YouTube uh, Pharmacist Ben and um, farm various subjects. Or I also have a YouTube channel. You can check that out as well. And uh, I've been doing more and more of those YouTube videos. You can also check out the Longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And I'd love to have you on my team. If you're interested in building a business, I can help you build your business. If you're entrepreneurially minded, if you want to help change the world and heal the world and use the power of nutrition to do it, Longevity is for you. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a Longevity business. Call 866-735-2470. They can tell you all about it, or you can uh, sign up right off the websites, Brightside ben.com criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com and I also want to remind you to check out our skin health products at truthtreatments.com if you've been listening to the last couple of months of bright sides and we've been talking about the connective tissue and now you're interested in generating the production of collagen and elastin and extracellular matrix hyaluronic acid all the stuff that makes your skin thick and taut and beefy and youthful looking you want to know about retinol and vitamin C in fact only retinol and vitamin C are going to drive the production of connective tissue from a, a topical a standpoint. That's why I came up with my Truth Retinol 5% Gel. If you're dealing with any skin aging symptomology, including wrinkles, fine lines, and thinning skin, or if you just want to prevent those from occurring, if you're dealing with acne blemishes or uh, dark spots, if you have skin tags, retinol can help drop off or help dissolve skin tags. Retinol is also good for bug bites. And this, that's something I learned from, from uh, one of my patients. She was putting our, her retinol in bug bites and was making the bug bites improve and, and heal much faster. You can find out all about our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, we're going to talk to Rennell Wood at the bottom of the hour about her book, Touching Light, and we'll take your calls in this segment. We don't have any calls, so uh, if you uh, want to dial in, you'll get right on. Uh, otherwise, got some cool stories I want to talk to you about here. This one is from the journal Molecular Cancer Therapeutics, the January issue. Promising new drug stops the spread of melanoma by 90%. Michigan State researchers have discovered that a chemical compound reduces the spread of melanoma by up to 90%. This is so interesting because this chemical compound that they're talking about was actually used to treat something called scleroderma. Now, scleroderma is a connective tissue disease. Scleroderma is an autoimmune disease that affects the connective tissue. It causes excessive fibrosis, and as it turns out, the same mechanism that causes fibrosis which is uh, 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 the secretion of fibers, fibrosis, in, in the skin, skin thickening. Scleroderma is a skin thickening disease, and the same mechanism also contributes to the spread of cancer. Cancer is a connective tissue disease, especially when it metastasizes, when, it's, when it spreads. The fi uh, fibrotic effect is required for cancer to spread, and by stopping fibrosis, the migration of cancer cells, the metastasis of cancer cells, can also be spread. According to uh, the researcher, what's this gal's name here? Dr. Uh, Dr. Appleton, I don't know what her first name is, Dr. Kate Appleton, a postdoctoral student, she says that melanoma, the most dangerous, this is a quote, melanoma is the most dangerous form of skin cancer with around 76,000 new cases a year in the United States. One reason the disease is so fatal is that it can spread throughout the body and very quickly attack distant organs such as the brain and the lungs, unquote. This spreading is a result of fibrosis. Fibrosis is, re is required for metastasis, and by halting fibrosis, this uh, drug halts metastasis and up by up to 90%. But you don't need a drug 
You haul fibrosis. How do you haul fibrosis? Well, the same strategies that we talk about on this program all the time. Fibrosis is the manifestation of chronic breakdown. It's a repair mechanism. So stop the chronic breakdown, whatever is causing the chronic breakdown, and it almost always involves food as well as sugar. All right. Researchers uncover mechanism for cancer-killing properties of the pepper plant. Apparently, pepper contains an anti-cancer compound. This, in particular, the spicy Indian pepper plant, pepper longgumine, that's the name of the compound, has shown activity against many cancers, including prostate, breast, lung, colon, lymphoma, leukemia, and brain tumors. I don't like these ideas of, uh, well, I should say I don't like them. The notion of killing cancer is doesn't seem to me to be an intelligent strategy for dealing with cancer. Cancer is the end result of a diseased body, and by killing cancer, you may kill the cancer, but you haven't you haven't stopped the problem. The cancer is coming back. So you'll, you'll hear periodically about compounds that kill cancer, substances and foods and fruits and vegetables that kill cancer, nutrients that kill cancer. But killing cancer is not an effective anti-cancer strategy, in my opinion, because cancer is the end result of a diseased or degenerated or broken down body. Cancer is the end result of a cell of cells, and really there's no such thing as lung cancer or colon cancer. There's lung cell cancer and colon cell cancer, and we really should we really should call them that because then we'll understand that cancer is a cellular disease and cells only get diseased when they're starved when they're suffocated and when they're toxic and that's really the best anti-cancer strategies is to eliminate starvation suffocation and toxification by getting on a good nutritional supplement program by making sure that you're oxygenating correctly respirating correctly and by uh, eliminating toxicity, making sure that you're uh, uh, staying away from sugar and digestive toxins. That's how you stay away from cancer. Of course, moving the body around, improving circulation is also important. Eliminating any pro-inflammatory substances, that's also important. Hypoxia, low levels of oxygen, follow, at the cell level, follow inflammation. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Denise, who has just called in from Santa Cruz. Good morning, Denise. Good morning, Jimmy. Good morning, Ben. Hey, I what's going on? I want to know what you uh, think about the um, over-the-counter sunscreens. I'm going to Hawaii this week, well, and I don't know whether to make some or to, what's the best time to get. Well, it depends. You know, you don't want to burn. So I, I assume you're going to be hanging out on the beach, right? You're going to be catching your rays. So you don't want to burn. So. You don't right. want to burn. Sunscreens are a problem, and I, you know, I talk about them periodically on this program. I've been working with sunscreens as a pharmacist, as a dermatological pharmacist for many years, and I always wore a mask and I always wore gloves when I had to dip my hands in the oxybenzone, which is right. one of the is a type of sunscreen. The liquid, the liquid ones are not as toxic, perhaps, but they're still problematic. You know, if you drank your sunscreen, if you drank your octomethoxycinnamate, you'd probably die. Now I know nobody's mm -hmm. drinking it, obviously, but still, do you really want to put a toxin on? your body like that now if you're going no, to you no, don't I've have an option speak on if, that before, so. what's that oh, i've heard you speak on it before yeah. I don't know if it, it doesn't make sense to me it doesn't make sense yeah. to me to introduce a toxin to your body even if you're only putting it on top of your skin now that having been said if you don't have any choices it's not a good idea to burn so wear your sunscreen get it off as soon as possible and stay away from those dumb products that c compel you to wear a sunscreen like eye creams that already have a sunscreen in them you know sometimes they'll put sunscreen and eye creams and various products just to enhance the value or increase the value of the product and make it more valuable to you those should be avoided only wear a sunscreen if you absolutely need one and better than you better than a sunscreen is internal nutrition and if you can avoid a sunscreen use zinc oxide zinc oxide is not yeah. a sunscreen it's a sunblock you know that's a great subject but i'm just out of time and we got a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour i'll finish this up tomorrow morning i'll finish this up tomorrow we'll talk We'll talk a little sunscreen tomorrow. No, coconut oil is going to burn your skin. Denise, I got to go. Have a great morning. We'll talk to you soon. We got Rennell Wood coming. All right, we are back on the bright side. Thanks for joining us. We've been talking about the connective tissue now for months on this program. Hopefully nobody's getting sick of hearing about it because, in my opinion, this is the core of good health, the core of anti-aging, or vice versa when the connective tissue breaks down. This is the core of the degenerative and disease and aging process. Uh, one of the most important components of the connective tissue or aspects of the connective tissue is the fascia, and that's why I'm so excited to have our next guest on, Rennell Wood, who's written a book called Touching Light, How to Free Your 
fiber optic fascia in this book. Uh, real easy to read book, uh, but, but packed with information. Rennell talks about how you can nourish your fascia, uh, how you can heal your fascia, what the fascia is, the fiber optic nature of the fascia. Please welcome to the bright side, Rennell Wood. Hi, Rennell. Hi. Happy New Year to you. Thank I, you. So far, you know, so good. So far, so good. All right. Well, let's get right into it, my dear. Actually, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're a, a, you're a therapist, correct? Yes, I do myofascial release therapy. I'm a okay. former speech pathologist. And so I have a little science background. I'll bet you speech pathology has something to do with, uh, with the fascia too, right? Yeah, I... I'm hard pressed to find anything that doesn't or can't relate to the fascia. Isn't that interesting? And you know, that's what I've been saying for the last couple of months because we, we, this is a health program, we talk about nutrition, but it's hard not to talk about the connective tissue and the fascia if you're really interested in the health of the body. What exactly is the fascia? It is the saran wrap around everything inside you. <laughs> Very, nice, nicely said. You know, when I was a kid, I remember tearing apart a baseball and looking inside uh -huh. and seeing all these rubber bands inside the baseball and, and not quite understanding what rubber bands were doing inside a baseball. But there's a relationship to why rubber bands are inside a baseball or a golf ball and the fascia in the body, correct? Heavens, yes. That's a great analogy. Fascia is what gives us our spring hmm. when we are being athletic or being frightened. So it's not the muscles that give us our that give us that kind of propulsion. It's actually the relationship between the muscles and the fascia, correct? Exactly. And the fascia is the one system in the body that contacts every other system in the body. Nothing else does that. Interesting. Now, if you so, in other words, if you want to be really strong, it's not so much a, a, a question of building your muscles as much as it's a connective a, a question of building the fascia and the connective tissue, correct? Well, I wouldn't call it building it, but I would say keeping it healthy. And okay. unhealthy fascia is tight, restricted, and it's inhibiting the movement. Now, when I hear you say inhibiting and tight and uh, using these analogies, I think of the kind of shriveling that happens to us as we get older, the kind of the stooped appearance that elderly folks will have. That's a fascia issue. That's exactly right. Not a muscle issue. Interesting. So what can we do? I mean, if, if the fascia is so darn important, well, first of all, if the fascia is so darn important, why is it that, that we suffer from these fascial kinds of diseases and connective tissue diseases, in your opinion? Because it is a part of the autonomic nervous system. It's in charge of squeezing you when you get scared. So oh. it's not something that we necessarily have conscious control over at all times. But without awareness, there is no choice. Once we know that it's playing that role in fear, then we can consciously decide to interrupt the pattern. Otherwise, so, we're just walking around with an internal strangler going on all the time. That is really fascinating. So the fear response affects the fascia, and when this occurs chronically, you can end up with, with chronic, chronic fascial tension, if you will. Yes. Another way that you can get fascial restriction is with habitual movement. If you are, you know, you've heard of uh, work Carpal injuries tunnel. where it's overuse. You're doing the same thing over and over. That's where the fascia builds up. Or so like, if you, yeah, if you sit all the time, that's you why build sit, up fascial restriction in your hips. So sitting, is this why sitting is the new smoking? Yes, exactly. Okay. So doing, like just simply moving the body can have a, a beneficial effect, correct? Precisely. In fact, when you stop moving is when you start the dying process. I know that Very sounds dramatic, interesting. but Very if you interesting. have that in your mind, <laughs> it's motivating to move. So, in other words, the sicker you are or the tighter your fascia is, I should say, or the more degenerated your fascia is, the more important it is to move. Yes, exactly. Because everything that needs to flow inside your body, lymph, blood, light, is inhibited when it's being squeezed inside. And I must say, many diseases can be understood if you think of them from the perspective of too much squeezing going on inside the body. Huh, that's very interesting, like a strangling effect. Yeah, high blood pressure, great example. 
I, I love the, the, the relationship, the way you related fear to this squeezing effect. And when you say fear, there's various kinds of fear. There's physiologic fear, which is kind of automatic, an automatic response, but there's also mental and emotional fear. So there's psychological aspects to fascial strangling, if you will. You have done your homework. <laughs> that is right on. Even if you perceive danger that isn't there, it still has an effect and your body goes into that fight or flight mode. The purpose of the squeezing fascia, it's important to know, is very valuable because it's meant to squeeze everything inside so it slows down circulation and it squeezes nerves. So if you get hurt, you won't bleed too much or feel it right away. You know, interestingly, animals will always make themselves smaller when they're in, uh, when they're in danger, when they're being threatened, you know, or, yeah. or sometimes they'll make themselves bigger. But, you know, like I'm thinking like potato bugs or turtles, you know, how they shrink and they shrivel and they, they kind of close up when they're being threatened. Is that kind of what's happening in the body? That's a perfect example. When someone lies on my table, um, I oftentimes envision a turtle <laughs> because their head is pulled in and downward. Mm -hmm. And my job is to interrupt that pattern and bring them back out again. Even something like listening to, like, you know, the radio or news, news especially, like all the stuff. That, you know, we're surrounded with, with, with stimuli for fear. It's almost oh like we're encouraged God. to be in, right? We're encouraged to be in fear. Exactly. This, That's exactly right. You know, and there's I, chemistry that goes along with fear, which is highly acidic, lactic acid, uric acid, adrenaline. And when the saran wrap squeezes down around everything inside you, it traps that acidity, that acidity against your muscle surface, and it gets thick and gummy, and that's where you get what we may have heard of as adhesions. Interesting. Now, uh, one of the things that happens in addition to the strangling effect is because the fascia conducts electrical energy. One of, the that, that one of the things that happens as we shrivel up is the movement of electrical energy becomes impeded. So where, where does stretching the body f uh, fit into this whole equation? It is imperative for the fascia. However, it's important to know that, for instance, when I teach class, I'll tell a person, okay, I want you to hinge the hips keeping your legs straight and bend forward, then touch the ground. Not everybody can touch the ground yet, and no matter how much you want to, it's not necessarily going to happen unless you get myofascial release or go very, very, very slowly. Where the fascia is concerned, it does not tolerate speed. It, it does not, what was that it, word? It doesn't tolerate what? Speed. You can't rush it. Oh, uh, speed. Gotcha. But it let's go slowly. So, so when you're not when you're str when you're stretching, there's a there's a certain pace that you have to follow. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly right. Okay, I want to talk about this whole concept of myofascial release when we come back from, from our break. I'm pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Renelle Wood. Her book is Touching Light. We'll be back right after this. We are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Renelle Wood about her book, Touching Light, How to Free Your Fiber Optic Fascia. I definitely want to get into fiber optics here in a minute, uh, Renelle. But what exactly is myofascial release? It's a different approach to uh, body work that does not involve using oil on the skin. Mm. We work on the dry surface of the skin because we need traction to mm. be able to displace the attachment of the skin to the fascia, which is a maladaptive function of the body. Is it painful? Oh, good question. Because many people say, is this rolfing? Because that's not rolfing and that was very painful. Yeah, yeah. talk about rolfing and how it relates so to rolfing. I'm happy to remind people that what we found, as I said earlier, if we go slow, if we take our time, go to the barrier where the resistance is and wait and get permission from the body, you can get much deeper, longer lasting, effective relief than if you try and hurt somebody and force that hurts the therapist from using all of their strength. And it also causes the patient to brace, which is the opposite of what we're trying to affect. We've proven how tough we are. The challenge is to find out when we're receiving how soft we can be. So the distinction between myofascial release and rolfing 
is in the pace or it's, it's in the, uh, the speed of the process? The process is the same idea. You're doing the same thing, no? It is the same idea. They had the absolute correct idea, but they were using force. And uh -huh. yeah. So it's a gentle form of rolfing. Is that an accurate way of describing myofascial release? It is. Okay, good. That helps me out a lot. All right, so, <laughs> uh, so uh, for people dealing with neuropathies, can, can that have, is that an, uh, when we think about neuropathies, to think about diabetes, diabetics and uh, diabetes and neuropathy kind of go hand in hand. What is the relationship of the fascia, the connective tissue, as well as the relationship of myofascial release to dealing with uh, what we call neuropathies, painful nerves, tingling in the nerves? Yes. Basically, the nerves are being squeezed because if you can envision the whole body as surrounded everywhere from the superficial layers to the deepest layers of your body with this connective tissue and it's all connected, it is as though you have an internal fascial fishnet that has been squeezed so tightly over time that as in diabetes where the feet are the first to go, it's the distal parts of the body that are farthest from your heart that aren't getting blood flow because there's not enough movement happening in the body. There isn't room inside you. Is there anything people can do at home to do a myofascial release, or is it the kind of thing you need to go to a therapist for? I love to teach self-myofascial release. In fact, I do it twice a year in November and May here in Ohio. And we lie on the floor with these round balls developed by Jill Miller. They're called yoga tuna balls, small in size and three different sizes. And that roundness of the ball, that 360 degrees, allows you to lie on the ball and melt over it rather than grind mm. and twist as in foam rolling. You just allow that to absorb into your body, and that can interrupt holding patterns. If you don't have the ball, you can do what I call a knit fitness program where you lie on your bed and you kind of stimulate a temper tantrum. It's uh -huh. where your mind quiets and then your body intelligence takes over and leads you to writhe and twist and flail in directions your body knows it wants to let go. And you can really clear some fascial restrictions on your own that way. Like allow your body to convulse on the bed? Is that what you're saying? Exactly. It looks weird. It's the opposite of what we're used to, rational, logical, linear. It goes in directions you can't really explain, and you don't have to understand. But to allow your body to twist like you used to when you were a kid, and you'd wake up in the morning and you'd do that full squeezing, squealing thing, We've gotten older and we've gotten dignified, and dignity and appropriateness is a major uh, cause of fascial restriction when we don't allow our body to unwind. I wonder if that's why we love watching little kids play, because we miss that or something. You think? <laughs> I think it talks directly to our fascia, and we get a little contact high. Well, I, how about talking to your fascia? I think that that is a wonderful idea. I just said that to a client yesterday. I asked her, have you been talking to your elbow? She said, yes, I did right after the accident, but not so much anymore. What I feel, because I kind of personify body parts, is that a tourniquet has been put around an area for survival. The fascia squeeze, and it keeps squeezing, so you can go on and not have to constantly deal with the pain. But at some point, you've got to get that body part back and let your body know, I'm not mad at you. I'm mm. not trying to punish you. I love and appreciate what you did to protect me in a moment of fear. That's not happening anymore, and it's okay for you to soften and come back into the family. Huh, that's interesting. I wonder if self-talk can be held in the fascia, like negative self-talk, do you think? Like, uh, like thinking lousy thoughts, basically, or, or, or speaking to yourself negatively. Can that be held in the fascia? Yes, as you said earlier, emotions can affect and influence the fascia. Um, where, where, wherever, let's see, uh, every thought you have um, sends out a chemical. So we know through Bruce Lipton's book, The Biology of Belief, Great this book. concept of epigenetics, mm -hmm. that your body is always swimming in a pool of the chemistry of your thoughts. 
and you can cause disease by constantly emitting these negative thoughts that create the lactic acid, uric acid, adrenaline fat, which is highly acidic. But the beautiful part is we've got that pharmacy in our brain and we can check out different chemistry. And we know that chocolate produces endorphin, dopamine, and oxytocin, as do positive thoughts. And when you interrupt that sympathetic nervous system, it stimulates your parasympathetic nervous system and you literally get a bath of that chemistry of love, endorphin and dopamine and oxytocin. So it's literal that you are letting go of fear and you'll pee that away because it goes into your bloodstream and it's processed through your kidneys and you pee that away. And then you fill up with this chemistry of love. How about baths themselves? How about hot baths, hot showers, hot water? Absolutely. Good point. Uh, Epsom salt baths help detoxify your body to draw out toxins. They're wonderful. And also, warmth is what the fascia loves. And what was that word? And if I stand what, what, on a tall soap box. I didn't hear that and word. And tell people what did, never to Rennell, ice again. Rennell, what did you say? What is it that the fascia loves? Warmth. Oh, warmth. Not hot. Got it, warmth. But uh, not ice. Warmth. It responds mm -hmm. by becoming more elastic and drawn out and more relaxed. And icing a wound, it inhibits it inhibits the healing process. Mm. Warmth, like as in melting, it has a, probably has a melting yeah. effect on it. Very nice. Exactly, Have you ever seen pictures? Because the fascia is made of collagen and elastin, and that stuff responds to warmth by stretching and elongating. Have you ever seen the fascia move? It has like this really neat way of splitting and coming together and just kind of, it's all like it's alive, no? I watch my own fascia video. It's a minute and 20 seconds, and it's a compilation of uh, clips from Dr. Gambarto's film, Strolling Under the Skin. I watch it maybe four times a day because I mm. need to educate clients. I never get bored. It almost makes me cry. It's mm. so beautiful. It is beautiful. You can see those little fiber optic fascia that are magnified 25 times, and you realize that your entire body is surrounded with these little filaments that conduct light. Isn't that amazing? And we don't even have to explain uh, fiber optics because you have cable at your home, and you see TV, and those images get there through fiber optics. And, you know, it's interesting because we look at our bodies, they look like nothing's happening when we look at each other, right? But underneath it, the fa there's this all this dynamism that's going on underneath. I, w I wanted to talk about the fiber optic nature. We're not going to get a chance to do that because we're out of time. How do, how do the folks get a, get a hold of you, get a hold of the book, uh, website, et cetera? Help us out real quick. We only got about 30 seconds. Yeah. Amazon sells my book, Touching Life. My website is... Om Sanctuary, that's O-H-M Sanctuary.com I'm on Facebook, there's a Touching Light Facebook page, and Twitter is also Touching Light and I have a YouTube channel which is Ronell 1111 R-O-N-E-L-L-E -L -L -E oh. 1111 Alright, we're out of time, Ronell. Thank you so much for being on the show The book is Touching Light, Ronell Wood Thanks, Ronell. we'll talk again soon I'm Pharmacist Ben, thanks for listening to The Bright Side We'll be back at you tomorrow with more good health information Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful Spectacular day We'll talk to y'all later, bye for now